my name is Sahil and today I'll be speaking on Prosplane as a tool for provisioning infrastructure. Uh, a little bit about myself, uh, I work as a software engineer at InfraCloud and the lowest my Twitter handle. So today we will uh, first go through the fundamentals of Prosplane, uh, get an idea of what it is. Then we will try to provision some infrastructure uh, and I'll be using AWS for that. Uh, after that, we will see how uh, some features in Crossfin allow you to uh, make abstractions over existing infrastructure resources. And then uh, how it also helps you to build kind of a platform or control plane on top of your infrastructure. So Crossfin is a Kubernetes add-on that helps you manage your infrastructure. Uh, it helps so, it does so by allowing you to represent your infrastructure resources uh, as Kubernetes custom resources or CRs. A quick example of that can be seen here. So this is uh, a cross-plane representation of a RDS instance in AWS. So it's a typical Kubernetes CR and you have your uh, API version, the kind and uh, a bunch of parameters. So once you install the, the specification in, in a Kubernetes cluster, Crossplane will take care of actually creating an RDS instance in AWS account and then uh, watching this, that this RDS instance uh, throughout its lifetime for any modifications. Besides, uh, it also helps you build some abstractions uh, and then package and distribute your uh, infrastructure resources uh, uh, in form of OCI images. All right. Uh, before we actually provision some uh, resources, uh, we need to understand that, uh, that a provider is, is that actual custom controller uh, that is running in a Kubernetes cluster and trying to sync the desired state and the actual state in, the, uh, in your infrastructure or uh, AWS account in this example. Uh, provider config is nothing but a reference to a Kubernetes secret that is holding your credentials for the uh, infrastructure provider and then managed resources are the actual resources that you create in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. So altogether it may look something like this. Uh, you have a Kubernetes cluster, you install Crossplane in that and when you install a provider like provider AWS you get a bunch of CRDs uh, and the provider AWS is responsible for actually uh, connecting to your AWS account and then uh, managing all this uh, uh, actual uh, infrastructure resources which you have created through CRDs. So uh, let's try to create the RDS instance that we saw already. So again, it's a typical CR. So I can just do kubectl apply and the name of the file. So once this is done, uh, I, I should see an actual RDS instance getting created in my AWS account. All right. Uh, yeah, so we have the output. Uh, let's see uh, if Crossplane tells us anything about the state of this RDS instance. Okay, so uh, here's some metadata. Uh, so for example, these are the properties that uh, uh, we have provided to Splick and uh, a property called a state which Crossplane fetched for us from uh, AWS. So it says uh, the RDS instance is being created. Uh, let's go to the AWS console and then we should have, yeah, we have a RDS instance uh, that is being created. Uh, let's take a look on yet another example. So I have this IAM user and again, I can just do kubectl apply name of the file. Okay. So again, uh, I can take the state of that user. I can do kubectl get IM user. 
So again, uh, Proscon has fetched some properties uh, after the user was created in AWS. Uh, if I go to the IAM console uh, in AWS, I should see a user created here. So after this is created, uh, Crosswind uh, periodically is watching these resources, uh, the IAM user and the RDS instance uh, for any changes. And if, if it does uh, detect any changes, uh, it's the job of Crosswind to uh, bring it back to the desired set that we had specified in our uh, YAML file. So for example, if I delete this user, Crossplane at its next, next reconciliation uh, will detect that the user is deleted, uh, but the user does exist as CRD in Crossplane, right? So, uh, so it will try to just create the user again, as we should see. Yeah, so the user is created again. So, uh, like any other uh, Kubernetes resource, uh, Crossplane uses the of uh, the strong Kubernetes uh, control loop to uh, watch over the resources uh, in any uh, infrastructure uh, and then manages them throughout their life cycle. Uh, and by infrastructure, I, I, I actually mean anything that has an exposed API. Uh, you can just uh, create a provider for that and use uh, that with Crossplane. Let's go back to the RDS instance example that we saw earlier. So this was the YAML specification that we used to create just the DB instance. While actually creating DB instances, you might want to create uh, some other resources like a subnet group or uh, a security group to be attached with your RDS instance. To do that in Crosspin, you would typically write another bunch of YAML specifications and then install them to your Kubernetes cluster. While that works perfectly, you can get uh, a quite overwhelming uh, because you will have a lot of resources to deal with and a lot of properties to deal with. So Crossplane allows you to abstract all that away into a single resource of type called composite resource definition or XRD. So for example, I've created XRD called composite PostgreSQL instance, which exposes just one single property called a storage GB. And this will decide the storage capacity of my DB instance. All of the rest details are captured in a, another resource called composition, where I have, for, an, uh, for example, this case, I have a DB subnet group, uh, RDS instance, and the default properties of uh, the resources. Uh, what I also have uh, is the storage GB parameter, which is mapped to a field called allocated storage, which is a field that is actually accepted by uh, the AWS APIs. And I can label that uh, with a label something like this. So since this is for AWS, I can label it with provider AWS. So what this means is for the single uh, XRD, you can write multiple compositions. Let's say, for example, uh, other than this AWS composition, I can write another composition for GCP. And then the users, when creating an instance of this XRD, are free to choose where they want to create the DB instance and accordingly choose uh, the composition that they want. Another type that we can see here uh, is a composite resource claim uh, that is nothing but a namespace proxy of this XRD, which is automatically created by Crossplane. So in the end, uh, when you install the XRD in the composition, uh, then you can just create a DB instance uh, using any composition with a simple YAML specification uh, such as this. So as you see, I'm just providing the storage DB parameter and I'm choosing uh, my composition using a field called composition selector and providing uh, a label. And if I want to create uh, a DB instance in, uh, in GCP, I can switch to GCP. Uh, provided that I have a composition for GCP and it uh, defines the respective uh, uh, cloud resources that are uh, associated to a DB instance in uh, GCP. So 
uh, once you do that, uh, you can also uh, package this composition uh, and composite resource uh, definitions uh, into an OCI image by writing a configuration file. And then you can just push it to any uh, OCI uh, compatible uh, registry and then uh, allow others to use that. So using features like composition and composite resource definition, uh, you can build a sort of a platform which sits between your infrastructure users and the infrastructure itself. Uh, this allows you to uh, build a control plane so that your users do not directly use the infrastructure, but instead uh, use your control plane to actually uh, manage some infrastructure. Since all of this runs uh, on Kubernetes, you can use uh, some sort of policy manager for Kubernetes to, uh, to establish uh, an RBAC framework uh, over all these resources. So for example, uh, here using the same database example, uh, I can create an XRD which uh, will point to a VPC which I had created in prior. And then I can uh, allow users to create their own database instances which will be scoped to their own namespaces and they are free to use uh, compositions like uh, dev or prod uh, based on the requirements. So in this way, uh, a platform operator can uh, just impose some restrictions uh, like the restrictions on the field, uh, decide the, the level of flexibility to be given to the users for, for using the actual infrastructure. There are a bunch of uh, other features that uh, you might be interested in once you start uh, working with Crossplane. Uh, I suggest you visit the Crossplane docs or join the community on Crossplane Slack to know more. That should be all from me for today. Thank you.